So let's have a look at this DNA. The DNA has a lot of information in it. It's like a library. And it's got a huge amount of information in it. In fact, if you were to put all the information that's in the DNA in alphabetical language and put it into paperback <coughs> books, it would go to the moon of that. I can hardly get my mind around that. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 139, verse 15, it says, well, in verse 14, it says, I will praise you, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, marvellous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well, and that psalmist didn't know what I've just told you. But look at the next verse. It says, my substance was not hid from me when I was made in secret, curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. I didn't know what was happening inside of me. I, I held six babies, but I didn't know what was going on in there. But God knows. And then it says, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being imperfect. Isn't this interesting? My substance, what I'm made from. In my book were all my members written. Where's the book? It's right here. Right here. <laughs> Which in continuance were being fashioned, where there's yet there were none of them. I hope I haven't lost you with the old English. <laughs> But these verses talk about a writing, a writing about my members. What are my members? My arms, my legs, my, my hair, my eyes, my nose. It's all written in there. It amazed me when I read that. The DNA in the Bible. There it all is. And I'm sure when the psalmist wrote that, he didn't know what he was writing. <laughs> he wrote under the inspiration of God. And now in, 2023, we can read that and think, wow, look at that. It's all written in the DNA. The Bible says God has a book. He doesn't have to have a very big book. All he has to have in the book is our DNA. And <laughs> well, we've got a hundred trillion cells in our body. Seventy-five trillion are as this. Twenty-five trillion are our red blood cells. And we're going to be talking about our red blood cells as we go through the week. But today we want to talk about the 75 trillion other cells that in the nucleus have the DNA. The DNA is made up of the food that we eat. So the outside strands is made up of poly. What does poly mean? Many. Saccharides. What does saccharides mean? Many sugars. In fact, the breakfast that we all partook of this morning had many sugars in it. All our food is made up of many sugars. The crosswood bands is made up of amino acids. And amino acids is a breakdown from the protein that we eat. My almonds I had this morning were a good source of the amino acids. And the glue that glues these together is minerals. And the food with the highest minerals is vegetables. And the vegetable with the highest mineral is greens, dark green leafy vegetables. We should be having a dark green leafy salad every day. Well, when I was down south, we had collard greens. <laughs> Even when you cook them, you don't lose your minerals. Isn't that good news? You might lose some of your tender vitamins, but you don't lose your minerals. So we should have something green every single day. And as we'll look at later in the week, Look at the biggest bone creatures in the world. What do they eat? Green grass. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's how my children got their minerals. So when I took them to the dentist, I thought I was probably time I took the kids to the dentist. I think the youngest was four, the eldest was 15. The dentist said, your children's teeth astonish me. There's no cavities. They're strong. In one child, there was a little bit of a cavity starting, but she said the teeth are so strong, it arrested it. Ooh. And they don't drink the cow's milk. <laughs> they get their, their minerals, because that's what our bows, our teeth are made from, minerals, minerals. And as you'll see, as we go through this, one of the causes of damage to the DNA, we're gonna look at the causes, <clears throat> one of the causes of damage <clears throat> to the DNA, 92% actually. 92% of 
the reasons why the DNA gets damaged is mineral deficiency. Now that makes minerals pretty important. Mineral deficiency. Newton's third law of motion states that to every action there's an equal and an opposite reaction. I'd like to put my resident why up here because there is always a reason. Rudyard Kipling, he wrote a whole poem on this, but I'll just give you the first stanza. He said, I have six trusty serving men. They taught me all I know. Their names are what, why, when, where, how, and who. You take them with you everywhere you can go. And if your health professional gets annoyed at your questions, politely excuse yourself, leave the room, and don't pay the bill. <laughs> <laughs> Would you pay the bill if the tiler did a bad job? I knew it said shoddy, but I don't even get out that word shoddy. Is there a new word? An Australian word. I'll introduce you to a few Australian words. <laughs> bad job. <laughs> bad job. Would you pay the bill? No, you'd say I'd like that fixed up first, yeah.